separate and everything in my society taught me that white people were better than black people. Free! It was taught everywhere. Free! And that's how I grew up. Now, that racist hard shell began to crack for me a little bit when I got in high school and started reading some books. You don't have to move somewhere, you just need to read people. Yes, you read. They put in the book. I started reading that's right. and began to make some friends, began to crack a little bit. But I'm here to tell you, though it's taken a lifetime of recovery. It didn't come all at once. I'm still recovering. It's deep seated in there, folks. Now, we don't have that old Jim Crow stuff anymore, but we show how the new Jim Crow in our criminal justice system. And our children, our children are still being brought up in a society that has pervasive systemic racism. Some say we shouldn't white, shame white folks about their past, but this isn't just about the past. And if you are white and you're not somewhat ashamed, something's wrong with you. Now, I know that shame is not somewhere we want to live, but we should work through it. Work through it. Consider getting doing something better. And there are ways we can do this. We can do it with love. But you can't just come to a rally or read a book and be all woke and anti-racist? No. One activist says that racism is not like a cavity in the tooth that you can just go to a dentist and have him drill out and fill it. It's not like that. No, racism is more like gingivitis, like gum disease. And if you don't brush and floss your teeth every day, every day, it comes back up. It'll come right on back up. And that's what's happening. And our white folks need to work on this. I see some white folks out there. We need to work on this. Our black and brown sisters don't need to always have to carry this load. We do need to listen to their leadership, but we need to be willing to put our money and put our actions to work every day. Every day. You know, you say, I see, see t-shirts, you say, I want to run with my own. Well, as somebody said, about Mons, but he didn't run just one or two days a week. He ran every day to stay in shape. And we have to train ourselves, train ourselves. If you want to be a part of this work, we need to know that running with Maud, as somebody said, is not a sprint. I can tell you myself, I'm 69 years old. It's a lifetime marathon. A lifetime marathon. Now, you do have to pace yourself, and you may need to take a break. We know that because you get awfully tired out, and I know some of you are. But the reason you take that break is so you can get back in there. And like brushing your teeth and flossing, we make them, it need to make sure that working for justice is a daily habit. It needs to be a daily habit. What are your thoughts? What would this world look like if we could have open, honest conversations about racism? Because we still, to this day, have Caucasians writing to us saying things like, Oh, thank goodness the UK isn't racist. Or things like, I don't see color, which is really code word for, I refuse to acknowledge and see the suffering that black people are enduring at the hands